This one is awesome. <laughs>of might was my first dbz movie but this its sequel bardock and trunks's films were screened throughout september once on toonami when i was a kid and my brother taped them for me like with the vcr and seeing them was a blast for me and thrusted me further into my love for dbz i still have those vhs taped recordings and i would watch these four all the time this one's special to me when that incredible soundtrack goes i just smile consistently there's a lot of music, but it never feels out of place. It's seriously just straight fire, and I sound like an old millennial trying to say the cool lingo like that, but it truly is, and that's just an apt way to describe it. I'd say my two complaints are that the audio mixing on this Blu-ray is off, and maybe it always has been, but whenever the music plays or over someone speaking more than a quick phrase, it's hard to hear. Adjusting my TV settings helped, but I shouldn't have to do that. Number two, Goku going Super Saiyan is great, looks great, and starts off great, but it ends things a bit too swiftly after such buildup. I was ready for more of a brawl. The beam struggle is really great though, it's just a little bit rushed, but this is the case in point of like, talking about Tree of Might, where Goku gets the crap beaten out of him before he finally goes Super Saiyan, and some people give this one crap for Goku struggling to go Super Saiyan, but it was still rather new form and he goes again in anger, so that doesn't bother me at all, that's a nitpick. But when Goku doesn't transform in other ones, when he's able to defeat the enemy, but he does here after almost dying, it makes that head cannoning a little bit easier. And as usual with some of these are about 45 minutes long, the short movies, it could have used another 10 to 15 minutes to flesh things out a little bit more. Give Cooler more backstory and expand on his whole place in the world. We're left to assume a good bit, but however, he is uh, cooler than Frieza <laughs> by a mile. That transformation he does is just nuts and he means business, as does Piccolo, as usual. Some great fights and no wasted time on the front end. As far as canon goes, this is one of the easiest ones to be placed in the beginning of the three years of the training with no qualms. Cooler was on the outreaches of space and had just heard his brother had died. It's a confusion with everything on Earth and Trunks led him to believe that it was Goku and he's not entirely wrong. Some say that it took place in Trunks's future Trunks' timeline, but man. Goku still mainly uses Super Saiyan as a last resort, which is fine since it was new. And it's definitely canon to Dragon Ball GT's timeline as Cooler shows up when all the villains escape from the afterlife in Dragon Ball GT. It's refreshing to have one so easily fit. Dead Zone isn't hard to do either, but this one is pretty seamless. Dang it, Icarus is here, and the Tree of Might is referenced. How do I make sense of that? Again, they're their own timeline, I guess. The Z Fighters really need to give up camping, though, because everything bad happens when they do. Man, where is Vegeta? He would've been great to see in this. More on that later. I give Dragon Ball Z Cooler's Revenge four and a half out of five stars. I love these movies, man. They're just so much fun. And this, this has been such a nostalgia trip for me. And it's because of that, it's really easy to always look for the good.